Let's learn about Australia and Oceania. Australia is Earth's smallest continent, but it actually used to be part of a much bigger continent called Gondwana Land. Back during dinosaur times, Australia, Antarctica, Africa, South America, India, Arabia, and New Zealand were all connected to each other. But over millions and millions of years, continents drift. They move very, very slowly as volcanoes make new land and earthquakes shake pieces of land in different directions. Two thirds of the land on Earth used to be part of Gondwana land. But about 200 million years ago, the continent of Gondwana land started breaking up. And Australia has been its own continent, completely surrounded by ocean, for a really long time. That's why there are animals there that are completely different from animals anywhere else in the world. Australia and the island of New Guinea, just north of it, have marsupials, which are mammals that carry their babies in pouches, like kangaroos, wombats, possums, sugar gliders, koalas. Tasmanian devils and quokkas. There are also monotremes, which are the only mammals that lay eggs. There are two different kinds of monotremes: echidnas and platypuses. Another amazing animal that lives only in Australia is the Gippsland giant earthworm, the biggest earthworm in the world. The first farmers who saw them thought they were some kind of snake. Australia has some amazing birds like black swans, cockatoos, black-necked storks, colorful rosellas, and black and white magpie geese. Another animal that lives along the north coast of Australia is the saltwater crocodile, which is the largest living reptile in the world. They can grow twenty feet long. Along the northeast coast of Australia is an important place called the Great Barrier Reef. A reef is a structure in the ocean that looks like rocks, but is actually made of lots and lots of little houses of tiny animals called coral. Coral make their homes on top of old coral homes, making the reefs grow bigger and bigger. Reefs provide homes and places to look for food for many other ocean animals. The Great Barrier Reef is one of the most biodiverse places in the world. Biodiversity means lots of different kinds of plants and animals and other organisms live there. Australia also has some incredible rocks. My favorite rocks are called opals. Opals are a kind of rock that have rainbow sparkles inside them, like the orange, green, and blue sparkles in this black opal. Most of the opals that people make into jewelry. Come from Australia. There's one opal mine where miners found dinosaur bones that fossilized into opals. Speaking of fossils, some of the oldest fossils in the world have been found in Australia. The first life on Earth that we know about from fossils are stromatolites, which are mats of cyanobacteria, tiny organisms that get energy from sunlight, like plants do. Stromatolite fossils have been found in Western Australia that are three billion four hundred sixty million years old, and you can still see living stromatolites in some places, like these stromatolites in Shark Bay, Western Australia. Another famous rock in Australia is Uluru. Uluru is a rock that's so big it's a mountain. It survived in the middle of the desert for millions of years. Uluru is a very special place to Australia's first people, the Aboriginal Australians. People first came to Australia over sixty thousand years ago by boat. They learned to survive in all of Australia's environments, along the coasts, in the forests and mountains, and even in the desert outback. They created beautiful and intricate art styles and technology like the boomerang, which is used for sports and to hunt for food, and really cool musical instruments called didgeridoos. North of Australia is a large island called New Guinea. It's covered in mountains and rainforests. People have lived on New Guinea for probably seventy thousand years. There are about eight hundred different languages spoken on this one island, 
making it the most linguistically diverse place in the world. Australia and New Guinea are part of Oceania, along with the island countries of the Pacific Ocean. People started moving to the Pacific Islands thousands of years ago, sailing boats thousands of miles over the ocean to find islands no one had ever seen before. By comparing the languages spoken on these islands, which are called the Austronesian language family, scientists can figure out where they came from and what islands they moved to first. They started on Taiwan, this little purple island in Asia. From there, they spread to the islands colored red. They moved as far south as New Zealand, east to the islands of Hawaii, in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, and even further east to Easter Island about 2,000 miles from South America. They also went west, sailing across the Indian Ocean to the island of Madagascar, off the coast of Africa. So by about a thousand years ago, this civilization of seafarers had sailed over half the globe. A lot of the islands around the Pacific Ocean were made by volcanoes. Remember earlier when we learned that continents drift? That's because the surface of the Earth is made of different pieces, like puzzle pieces, called tectonic plates. The Pacific Ocean is mostly on one big tectonic plate, and around the edges of it, melted rock called magma pushes up from deep under the Earth, making volcanoes and earthquakes. There are so many volcanoes around the Pacific Plate that it's called the Ring of Fire. There are also volcanoes right in the middle of the Pacific Plate. They made the islands of Hawaii. There's a magma hotspot underneath the plate that melts through the rock and makes volcanoes far away from the cracks between plates. The big island of Hawaii is the newest. The older volcanoes have worn down and gotten smaller. By looking at the line that the islands of Hawaii make, we can see the direction the Pacific Plate has been drifting as it moved over the hotspot. What causes the hotspot? Scientists don't know yet. The highest mountain in Hawaii is Mauna Kea. Measured from the bottom to the top, Mauna Kea is the tallest mountain on Earth. You might know that Mount Everest in Asia is the highest mountain on Earth, but it starts on land, and Mauna Kea starts at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. It's like if your mom stood in the swimming pool next to you. You'd be higher than her, like Mount Everest, but she'd still be taller than you, like Mauna Kea. At the southern end of Oceania are the islands of New Zealand. There are some really cool birds in New Zealand that don't live anywhere else in the world, like the kakapo, the world's biggest parrot. It can grow up to two feet long, and it's the only parrot that can't fly. New Zealand's most famous bird is the kiwi. Kiwis not only can't fly, they're the only birds that don't have wings. Across the Pacific Ocean is Easter Island, which is called Isla de Pascua, or Rapa Nui, by the people who live there. Easter Island is famous for its moai, huge heads sculpted from rock, over 900 of them made by the Rapa Nui people hundreds of years ago. Less well-known, but possibly even more incredible, are the Rongo Rongo, symbols carved on wood tablets. No one knows for sure what they mean, but they might be an ancient way of writing completely different from the alphabet or any other writing system in the world. And if Rongo Rongo wasn't writing, then what was it?